Our guest at this moment is certainly one of Sinatra's favorite orchestral conductors as well as one of mine. Gordon Jenkins, welcome to Project Sinatra. Thank you very much, Paul. My first question to you. What kind of man is Sinatra? How does he differ from others? Well, Paul, uh, Frank is different from other people uh, in a lot of different ways. So I think the main thing that stands out about Sinatra after you around him a while is that his standards are tremendously high. Frank doesn't allow for uh, people not uh, measuring up to what he thinks they should be, and I think that's been part of the reason that he's had a few instances in his life of, uh, shall we say, unfortunate publicity. But you have to figure, I don't see any, I never could see any reason why Frank Sinatra should be like other people. The same as I never thought that Nat Cole should be like other people, or Judy Garland, or Al Jolson. They, they have a lot to give to the world. They, uh, I could never see why people uh, criticized Judy for things because it was different than the, the women next door to them. Why should it be the same? There's a big talent, the same as uh, Frank is a, a giant talent. And uh, to match his standards, he has, a, I guess, the finest musical taste that I've ever run into, and I've been around for 163 years. And I've gotten so uh, to believe in this man's ideas of what's good and bad in music that uh, I wouldn't anymore question him. Of course, you don't, uh, in, in my position as orchestrator and conductor, if, if a singer wants to do a thing a certain way, you generally go along with it, unless you can give him a good reason why he's hurting himself or hurting the record. But uh, Frank, is, I've never seen him wrong. Every suggestion he's ever made to me have always been improvements. He has an un, unfailing uh, feel for tempos in a song, and you, uh, you know, you might be inclined to think that a ballad is uh, is slow, but it, it's it's not that. It's not just slow. It's a certain place in the spectrum of time that that ballad has to be in order to be as close to perfect as any of us are, are ever able to deliver. And that's all Frank is after. He doesn't care about uh, second rate. All he cares for is perfect perfection. He doesn't mind uh, spending money if he wants his lawn cut. He doesn't ask how much the guy wants to cut the lawn. He wants that lawn cut perfectly. Blue Eyes is back. Orchestrated and conducted by our in-person guest, Gordon Jenkins, to whom we'll be returning as Project Sinatra continues. As to inherent musical taste, how do you rate him? I think his taste and his standards are really what uh, set him uh, away from the crowd. And uh, he, uh, he knows so well what's good for him to sing. I've written several songs that I jumped up and down and threw my hat in the air, and I thought, boy, this would be great for Frank. And I played for, for him, and he he doesn't think it's good for him, and there's no point of arguing or, or questioning it because he, you know that he's, that he's right. No, there isn't any reason to uh, make a thing out of it, not that it would do you any good anyway, but uh, I've come to believe in his, uh, his judgment above my own, which for me, <laughs> that's a giant statement. I, I've always been so self-centered and so mad about myself that I never said that about anybody else. Of the many recording sessions you have worked with, Frank, in what song did that cohesive karma, that complete understanding of musical alchemy, take place? The two uh, outstanding examples uh, that come readily to mind with me are the uh, when we made Lonely Town, and uh, then just lately when we made uh, Send in the Clowns. And I think there are probably a lot of uh, reasons for that. They're both wonderful, wonderful songs. They're just a ranger's absolute delight, both of those songs. And uh, you kind of get a thing with Sinatra. He, he gives out a lot personally. I, I would not want to work on a record with Frank if I couldn't get close to him and see him and have him see me. For one thing, he, he'll follow the orchestration and he'll... If he hears me do a thing, he'll hold back and wait and let that go by, and then he'll come in. 
I don't dare look down at the music because if I take my eyes off Sinatra, I might lose him. I, I might, uh, he might disappear on me. He got into those two songs. So far, the Lonely Town is just absolutely a heartbreaking rendition. It's so sad, and he got the meaning of the of the song so well. And I was just uh, carried away with the whole thing. Even before we got down there, I put a, a little bit of Manhattan Tower in for nothing at the end. Never leave me. I thought it fit and would be a nice thing to do there. There's nothing I could do for myself as a soloist that would be as satisfactory to me as doing this because uh, I'm contributing. I'm not just showing off for Gordon Jenkins. I'm contributing something to an artist who God knows deserves anything that uh, you can possibly give him. And it's so much fun to see a, see a master, absolute master, sing a song the way it should be sung. It just gives you chills up and down your back. A Jenkins Choice. Lonely Town. To you, Gordon Jenkins, our guest of this segment, a final question. Please do not think of arrangers, producers, conductors, vintage. When I say Sinatra, what song now comes to your mind? Well, I, I think I would go back to my, my last uh, mention. I, I hate to keep boring everybody with sending send the clowns, but he says one word in there. He says the word, sings the word farce, and you, your whole life comes up in front of you. It's, it's the damnedest thing I've ever seen. It's just, he puts so much in that phrase that it just uh, takes a hold of you. And uh, I think when it's, uh, in my personal experience, uh, I got to go with the two that I said before, uh, Lonely Town and uh, Send in the Clowns. And all of us, I think, feel that our newer contributions to the music are better than the old ones. We generally do. I think all the songs on uh, on the uh, album we made in September of my years are, are fantastic renditions. The, the one that was a big hit, a very good year, naturally, and uh, Hello, Young Lovers. Uh, nobody ever came within a million miles of that song, the way Frank does it. He believes it. He believes all, every line he sings. That's what makes him such a wonderful, uh, wonderful performer. It's all, it's all real to him. Our guest in this period has been Gordon Jenkins. And when I think of Jenkins, synonymous with Jenkins, I think of violins. Gordon Jenkins, thank you so much for guesting. You're quite welcome, Paul. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and my favorite subject, Frank Sinatra. Project Sinatra continues.